Sarah, Kate, this is quite a journey from the red carpet in Los Angeles, winning an Emmy, to here in Davos. You've been awarded the Governor's Award. What does it mean to you? Well, it's warmer in LA than it is here, <laughs> for, for starters. Um, well, it was awarded to the organization, and the organization is 40 years old. We were founded during the AIDS crisis um, in the United States with two objectives. One was to hold media accountable and be a watchdog, um, and especially on their reporting on HIV. And the second piece was about lobbying Hollywood to tell our stories, to humanize us as a community, the LGBTQ community. And so for us, or for, for the current staff, the current board, the former, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people who have worked at GLAAD and donated to GLAAD, it was very validating, honestly, because this is so much of the work that we've done for 40 years now was getting these stories told and being recognized with the Governor's Award was really validating to our work. What was that moment like though, Sarah Kate? Could you take it in? You know, I actually wasn't nervous. I thought I was going to be fretting and super nervous, um, but I had a message and that was my guiding light, was what I, I wanted to use that moment for me, the award is amazing and this big statue and you know the glamour and all of that is really fun. But that was a moment to speak to millions and millions of people about the challenges that our community have and how people can help. How is the entertainment industry doing in terms of representation of the LGBTQ plus communities? Are things improving, do you think? Well, one of the interesting things is that when we started 40 years ago, there were zero LGBTQ scripted characters um, on TV. Today, there's 600. So they're doing much better. Um, of the Emmy nominations on Monday night, half of those shows had LGBTQ characters. Um, where there's Great room for improvement is in representing transgender characters. Um, that number is painfully small. And what we're seeing is that because people don't know trans people, what's happening is that that is being filled with misinformation and lies. And so I need that water. What my, my appeal to Hollywood was I need that watershed moment that we had for the gay community, like from Will and Grace or Ellen, for trans people. I want you to laugh with trans people and learn about them and cry with them and not laugh at them and not learn about them from political um, deviant folks who are, who are negative. What about inclusion in the workplace? Because you're here to now talk about here. that at Davos. Yes. Um, so I think inclusion in the workplace has been under fire. And um, we saw it, especially during Pride Month, which is June. We saw a lot of companies, a small organized group of anti-LGBTQ activists really went after companies. Um, and at the beginning of Pride, they ended up having two big, pretty big run-ins, one with Bud Light and another one with Target, which is the retail store. And at that point, we put together a, a team to help the other companies, because we could see what, what was happening. They would get Target on, online, and then they'd build this following and this narrative. And we stopped it. Um, because it wasn't many people, and it's actually not how Americans feel about LGBTQ people, and not how they feel about businesses. Americans, specifically I'm speaking, want inclusion, want to see companies that include people. They'll buy more from them, they'll, they'll want to work more for, from them, with them, um, and so I think that there's a small narrative that's taken a lot of the a disproportionate amount of the airways. And so here in Davos, I feel that my job is to be meeting with the corporate leaders and talking through this with them. What advice do you have for those companies, though, to be more effective allies? Um, 
I think my, my advice is, and it always has been, don't back down. If you have values and you promote those values, that's the biggest mistakes we saw, was a backing away from what these folks said were their values. And that's when they got, it became a media nightmare and firestorm for them. But if you stick with your values, a lot of other companies were challenged, big companies, conservative companies, and they didn't back down, and there were no news headlines. Sarah Kate, with same-sex relationships illegal in some countries, how can global companies navigate advocating for LGBTQ plus acceptance? Well, one of the things that we're doing um, in this Davos is actually we have three activists um, from, from countries where it is illegal. So Africa, Uganda um, specifically, and um, some other countries as well. And we have them here sharing their stories because when you know people's stories, it's hard to hate them. And so we're getting them in front of corporations and we're getting them in front of government officials so that we can start advocating for that. The other thing that we've been doing is working very closely with the Pope. Um, and we've done a considerable amount of work with him. Um, He's come out to say that same-sex relationships are okay, but not same-sex marriages. Not yet. I mean, you have to start. You've got to start with you're baby looking steps. at the positive. You're talking yes. about when when you're trying to work with the Vatican or with the Pope, you're not talking in years or decades. You're talking in centuries, um, and so you have to be mindful. And I always say you have to meet people where they are, and that's how you'll move things forward. So um, I think having a Pope finally say that same-sex um, partners can be blessed or marriages can be blessed is an enormous step forward. It's not the end, it's the beginning. Um, everybody thinks you gotta go to the end right at the beginning and you gotta start somewhere. Um, that being said, I think um, these countries need to wake up. It's bad for their economy. It's bad for all their businesses. And we know that if you're not an inclusive country, it has a direct correlation to your bottom line. Um, and you're not going to attract talent. You're not going to foster business. Um, and yet they're still doing it. And so we're trying to have different conversations. And one of the reasons that we brought the activists is because we know, move, first we need to move hearts and minds. Yeah. And the way you do that is by knowing people who are LGBTQ. And these folks are living under these criminalization laws and it's scary and terrible. Another theme here at Davos is AI. There's a lot of talk, of course, about misinformation being spread by AI and social platforms. Are you worried that the LGBTQ plus community will be targeted? I am absolutely 100% worried. Um, I think I, I would be under a rock if I weren't. And um, I know, so Web 2.0, and when I think of Web 2.0, especially for the LGBTQ community, Social media has been a lifeline for our community. It's been an organizing tool. It's been a, it, a community builder. And it has been so weaponized against us. Um, and so what started out as a really positive thing and still remains positive for a lot of our community. But if you're an LGBTQ person, um, most LGBTQ people know that, report that they know that they will be abused online. It's just table stakes. Um, so with AI and the advent of it becoming so popular, there are, I think, especially like Sam, knows that the, they want to build it differently. Um, is it happening? I'm not quite sure that that's happening, but we are taking it really seriously at GLAD and looking at how we're going to help our, help our community and navigate through this so that it is an equal playing field. Well, GLAD named X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, as the most unsafe major social platform for the community. In what ways is X failing? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that, but I think it, it's, it's catastrophic, honestly, because it's, it actually was 
the, the one platform that we would hold up as a great example several years ago. Um, they had amazing trust and safety council. They really had conversations with activists and advocates of underrepresented communities. And now that's all been cut off. There's no longer a trust and safety council. And it is a place for misinformation, lies, and hate to fester and grow. Um, it, it's been a terrible platform um, for the LGBTQ community among every other mis underrepresented community. What advice do you give to those, Sarah Kate, who are, at, who are getting abuse on those platforms? Um, you know, it, it, it's really hard. It, is, it really affects mental health, especially for folks who live in remote or rural areas who don't have access to community and people. And so I always say to try and find the community and then just block. Block the noise, block the hate. Um, be really, and report it, even though it, it helps us because we continue to advocate advocate on the back end. Um, so it's very helpful if you report it, even if they're not taking action, because they're not taking action. Are you worried about another Trump presidency? Um, I believe in the better good of American citizens, and I think that um, our democracy is on the line, and it's a, it's a real threat. The behavior that has happened over the past several years and the, and the, the move that our country has been making or political leaders in our country, and I think that the American people will reject it. And if they don't? I mean, if they don't, we have a very different conversation happening. We'll be working, our work on the election is very much about getting LGBTQ people to the, to the polls because we know when they vote, they vote for pro-equality folks and educating people at what's at stake in this election. Just finally, Sarah Kate, what is your message to leaders from all different industries here at Davos? What do you want them to take away from the conversations that you're having with them? Um, I want them to understand how urgently we as the LGBTQ community and all of the, um, all of the intersections of our community, black and brown folks, women, um, people who are disabled need voices, powerful voices speaking up for ourselves, especially at tables. And tonight we will be lighting up the promenade um, in pride colors in rainbow with over 20 companies um, who are supporting the LGBTQ community. That's more than we did last year. Last year was our first time. And so um, we ask everybody to show up on the promenade tonight. It'll be a rainbow. Of, and we want to see support from these companies and these world leaders. Sarah Kate Ellis, thank you so much for joining me here at the CNBC Sanctuary. Thank you for having me.